Hello YouTube, it is Valley Girl 5678 here, and you're probably wondering where I am. Well, get this. Valley Girl 5678 is in the valley this week. That's right, you heard it right. Valley Girl in the valley. You know, the universe is aligned. You're welcome. And what is a more fitting album to review for this kind of vibe? than the album I am reviewing here today, which is Desire I Want to Turn Into You from Caroline Polacek. This is Caroline's second full-length LP following 2019's Pang, which was a massive success for her, guided by her iconic song and music video, So Hot You're Hurting My Feelings. Do not be mistaken though, Pang was Caroline's solo debut. Prior to that, she was one half of the duo Chairlift, as well as had slash still has a very fruitful career in songwriting. But yeah, this album, Desire I Want to Turn Into You, had quite the spread out single rollout, starting with Bunny as a Writer in 2021, followed by Billions in early 2022. Later in the year, we got Welcome to My Island alongside the music video and remixes, as well as then later, we got Sunset. And then just a few weeks ago, we got Blood and Butter right before the release of the full album. But you know, after these literal multiple years of anticipation, the album is finally here. So let's get into it. The first track, Welcome to My Island, was the lead single for this album. It was produced by Caroline, Dan, Negro, who was the main collaborator on Sour, um, Olivia Rodrigo's 2021 iconic debut. Danny L. Harrell, who will continue to be a collaborator on the rest of the songs on this album. He has literally worked with all of your favorite British pop girlies and more. And Jim E. Stack, who has worked with artists ranging from Charlie XCX to Bonnie Bear. And it was written by Caroline, Danny, and Jimmy Stack. This song is actually the closest thing we have to a title track, given the fact that the line is I want to turn into you is the main hook of the chorus. For me, the biggest thing that stands out on this track is Caroline's obviously like unhinged but very impressive and iconic vocals. This song literally brings you into the surreal, fantastical world of this album, which is Caroline's Island, obviously, where she wants to turn into a feeling while at the same time maintaining her own personhood. The second track, Pretty Impossible, was produced and written by Caroline and Danny. This song is so cool because it was actually just made off of that first melody, the da 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 da, -da as the bass, and then worked with it and on top of it and through it and all of that stuff. So while you can designate certain sections of the song to be a verse or a chorus, the song technically doesn't have any verses or choruses or anything like that. Lyrically, the song continues to develop on the main theme of the album as a whole, which is the duality of and blurred lines between reality and fantasy. With lines like, now you got one eye on the lane and one eye on the lava, and home where it's all red and velveteen falling back into the leaves. I really like how this is further played with in the song, with the uses of common, modern, Modern slang like bay and so true, interwoven with the very ethereal, poetic lyrics. And the title of the track just makes so much sense given all of this. <laughs> Am I swiveling too much? Like, I haven't had a swivel chair in a video yet, and um, I don't like how powerful I feel. Track three, Bunny is a Rider, was obviously the first single we got for this album rollout, given that it came out back in the ancient times of 2021. Oh my god. This was the only self written track on the album, and it was produced by Caroline and Danny. Themes of escapism continue with the bop that is this track. Fun fact, Caroline Polachek and Charlie XCX are like besties and I think they like were roommates for a bit. But the reason I know this is because Charlie XCX had a podcast and naturally Caroline was on one of those episodes. And yeah, they mentioned that they live together, but Caroline also talked a little bit about this track. She said that Bunny is all of us and anyone can be Bunny if you'd make yourself a bit unavailable. And that Bunny is a writer, the song is an independence fantasy. The lyrics of the chorus continue to exemplify this idea even attaching it to the overall theme of the album with the line, I'm so non-physical. There's this genius quote that I find to be really interesting. At some points in the track, Caroline's inflection on the words I do sounds almost as if she's saying adieu. Adieu being a goodbye fits the overarching theme of disappearance. And then in verse two, she expands a bit more on what she's attempting to escape by asking Alice and catching the rabbit. Track four, Sunset, was the second to last single we got. It was produced by Caroline and Sega Bodega, who has worked extensively with Shy Girl and other artists within that sort of genre. And then it was written by Caroline and Sega, as well as Caroline Aiken, who has worked with Dua, Charlie, 
Chloe, and more. This track is obviously an immediate change of pace sonically with the use of the Spanish guitar. However, the guitar does feel reminiscent of the guitar in Welcome to My Island. I am literally obsessed with the melody and vocal performance in the chorus. Like every time I hear it, I want to like bask in it. I want to bathe in, I want to, I want to bathe in the chorus. Only the girlies will get it. Thematically, it's a continuation of the album in that now Caroline is showing us that she has found someone that she wants to escape with or ride into the sunset with. I love verse two lyrically and her vibrato is insane and carries the song with the production to a conclusion that sounds like literally riding into the sunset. Track five, Crude Drawing of an Angel, was again produced and written by Caroline and Danny. This is one of my favorite tracks on the album, honestly. It is geniusly written. For example, verse one, Caroline said about this song that she wanted to make a song that was both sexy and scary, and I can say that she definitely succeeded. <laughs> I believe was written and produced by Caroline and Danny, as well as Ariel Rekche, who has worked with Taylor, Adele, Troye Sivan, Time, and more. Now, this is a song dedicated and for, uh, uh, departed icon and dear friend of Caroline, Sophie, who changed pop music forever. The intro line and then the line that appears later in the song, look over the edge but not too far, references Sophie's death as she fell off of her roof while looking at like an eclipse, I believe. Caroline said the song was about immortality and the use of the orchestra hits sound of early digital synths feels very fitting with this idea of immortality specifically to Sophie who was was a pioneer in, you know, digital music. And she is immortalized through her art and the impact her art had on art to come. Track seven, Fly to You, Feet Grimes and Ditto, produced by Caroline and Danny and was written by Caroline and Danny and Grimes and Ditto. Now, I want you to look at me. Is a Grimes and Caroline collab all that I've ever needed? Yes. I love the electro pop backbeat. It high key like makes the song. The Grimes verse on top of it is fucking perfect. It is like a Grimes and Caroline and Ditto pop postal service track. And it's a match, it's a match made in heaven, which is apparently Caroline's island. I, I'm sought. The line, I fly to you, not just somewhere deep inside of me, feels like the thesis statement of the album. The next track, Blood and Butter, was the fifth single, produced and written by Caroline and Danny. It's the sweetest love song with a very unexpected and very slay bagpipe moment that initiates the best outro of the album. That sonically encapsulates the album perfectly. With the guitar, the drums, the harmonies, the like electronic metal like swish. I don't know what to call that. Someone tell me what that's called. Track nine, Hope Drunk Ever Asking, was written and produced by Caroline and Danny. This is a very very beautiful, philosophical, existential track that is so reminiscent of the times we're living in, yet so timeless, which is a major theme in Caroline's work in general. This is my favorite track lyrically on the album. Like, this song is so meta lyrically. Like, I could sit here and, like, break it down for you, but, like, it's so much more satisfying, like, coming to terms with it yourself because everyone can relate to this song. Butterfly Net was written and produced by Caroline and Danny. Here we have another slower ballad-like track that makes beautiful use of the instrumental motifs of the album. The song's theme of loss and its humbling nature again feels just as relatable as Hope Drunk Ever Asking and fits into the general themes of the album perfectly. The choral moments make complete sense with the very divine nature of the song as a whole. Smoke was produced and written by Caroline and Danny. I want to read this quote from from Caroline about this song. A lot of the motifs I'm playing with on this record are about using elemental primal textures, dirt and the earth coming up in different ways, volcanoes especially, as a metaphor for the subconscious and for everything we've repressed during the pandemic. And then she writes in the songs like Spotify storyline or whatever, that the lyric floating over the volcano is a bit of a joke about pretending you can suppress something that you absolutely can't, pretending you're in control when you're absolutely not. The development of the song melodically to the bridge and to the outro is incredible. This song is fucking awesome. And then the last track, Billions, was the second single. It was produced and written by Caroline and Danny. Now, this was my number two track of 2022. This song wraps up the entire album in such a like psychedelic way thematically and sonically 
and it's just a perfect album closer for a perfect album. This album is so poetic in every sense of the word in every way. Like she's constantly referencing other moments on the album, whether it's thematically, sonically, like through instruments or through lyrics. I, like I, I kind of think she's a creative genius. This is one of the best albums I've heard in a while. She's getting a 10. Thank you so, so much for watching my video. As always, my TikTok and Instagram is linked below. And if you've made it this far into the video, thank you, by the way, perhaps you would be interested in hearing about my exclusive content on Sunroom. Sunroom is an app for female and non-binary creators to be able to post their content in a non-censored fashion whilst getting monetized for that content. It's kind of like if Patreon and Instagram had a baby. On my sunroom, I am do just doing more exclusive content in the sense of just like kind of talking a bit more freely about music. I'm doing some like exclusive like dance content. I'm doing some content and you know, talking about whatever I want to talk about. But you can also do personalized things with me through the app, such as I can make you a playlist, you know, we can DM, you can request certain kinds of content from me. But basically, yeah, it's a really cool app. My membership is literally only $2 a month. So yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, that is linked below as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.